So I want to make this video, but there's no time to explain why I can't explain the video. Okay, so let's just move on and get to the multiplayer. <laughs> that's that's pretty much destiny in a nutshell right there. <laughs> What's up, everybody? So I wanted to set up this scenario before I go into the commentary because yesterday I had a conversation with somebody and I wanted to share it with you guys. I actually, I tweeted about it, but very briefly. I didn't really explain the whole conversation. It would take too long. So I was talking to this guy in my psychology class. He, uh, you know, he's a cool guy. He talks to me about Destiny a lot because he knows I have the game. He has the game and he's a big fan. He likes Destiny. So he comes up to me and he says, hey, I'm finally level 20. I said, oh, that's cool. You know, I haven't really been playing, though. I, I kind of lost my motivation to play it. It's not really my thing anymore. And he says, why? And you know, what happened? It's such a good game. And so I asked him, well, what do you think about the story? Because I was curious what he would say. I figured maybe we'd be on the same page about it. And he would kind of understand where I'm coming from. But he says, oh, the story's awesome. I love it. <laughs> and, uh, so I didn't expect that answer. I'm standing there and I'm just like, what? Really? And he says, uh, yeah, you know, it's cool. And I said, well, you didn't feel like it was incomplete. You know, it was unfinished. It was an incomplete game at launch. And he says, oh, no, that's what the expansion packs are for. And I said, OK, yeah, but you have to pay for those. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, they're only 15 bucks each. I already got the season pass, so I'm going to see the whole story. It's going to be awesome. And uh, I said, well, really? You don't mind paying extra to get the full story when we could have had it at launch? And he says, well, it's an MMO. That's how they are. And then I said, well, you think about it, you're paying like $100 instead of $64, which would be what we pay up front for the game. Instead, you're paying 30 something more dollars for the expansion pack. So you're paying $100. And he says, oh, that's all right. It's okay, that's not that much. And, uh, wow, I couldn't believe it. I was really kind of surprised that people actually felt that way, that they were cool with getting ripped off. Really, I mean, a hundred bucks to get a story, we don't even know if it's good or not. And that's the thing, when it comes to these expansions, these season passes, these, this DLC, we buy them sometimes before the game even comes out. We commit, and we don't even know if we want them or not. For him, you know, he he doesn't regret it, but I'm sure many out there, not including me, because I didn't buy the uh, season pass, thankfully, but I'm sure some of you probably did, and if not for Destiny, then you've bought it for different games, and maybe you've regretted it, because you don't even know if you want it. <laughs> I mean, you don't even know if you're going to like that game, and that's the whole sales pitch with those season passes. It's like, get it now before everyone else, you'll be set up to get all the stuff. But then in the reality is you don't even know if you're going to want it. You don't even know if you're going to like that game. And it's just crazy the gaming world we live in right now because it's it's come to this. This is the norm. Season passes, DLC, sometimes on the disc, which I have a huge problem with because that's content that they're withholding until you pay for it when it's on the disc like i understand if they make maps or something later on they create them they want to add more for the community because the game's a year old or something like that that's fine but when it's on the disc it's there it's just waiting for you to pay for it like in three months or whatever i have a problem with that i can't stand that and i remember gears of war i think was accused of that destiny is now being accused of that because of some glitch. Of course, Bungie, you know, pretty much gave a really nice note about it and, and, and talked about it and said, hey, you know, it's just not ready yet, but we can't wait for you to play it. And, you know, all nicey nice. But the reality is they're ripping us off, really, when it comes to this stuff. If that was part of the game to begin with, if it's an incomplete story and we have to buy expansion packs to see the rest of the story because they don't have time to explain, the story at that time because you don't have the money that's really what it is we can't explain the story because i don't see the money you know and it's just crazy like i, I think about this sometimes and i just think dang i'm so glad I, I really did put my foot down when it comes to dlc i haven't bought dlcs since i want to say gears of war 3 it's it's been a while um if it wasn't for kenny i wouldn't have dlc like on the last of us or other games because he he buys it 
And if he did not buy it for The Last of Us, I probably would have um, because I love that game. So it really has to be a game that I love and will support and I don't mind paying money for. But when it's a game like Destiny that's unproven and it's before launch and I'm thinking about a season pass, heck no, I am not buying no season pass. No thank you. And even for games like Evolve and uh, The Witcher 3 and The Order, games that I'm anticipating, I will not buy a season pass because you never know. That game could be completely broken, like Battlefield 4. It could be a disaster. We just don't know. So I'm not saying don't support games, don't buy season passes. It's up to you. But me personally, I've started to feel like, damn, these developers are really taking advantage. They take advantage of that hype. They offer it at your local GameStop. They say, hey, sign up for the season pass. You're here pre-ordering. You might as well get the season pass before anyone else. They give you all these perks and advantages and extra side missions or whatever, when really it should be in the game from the get-go. And that's why these games, when they come out, people complain that they're incomplete, they're trash, they're horrible, whatever, because we're living in a time when it's expected now to have a bunch of content. Instead of unlocking the content from playing, we're being now taught to buy it. And really, when we don't even deserve it sometimes. So really, we're just getting all of this content. And in a way, it's kind of making us spoiled. Uh, I don't mean all of us, but I just mean as a, in general, as a whole community, we want more, more, more because we are constantly offered all of this content. And when a game doesn't have that standard, when it doesn't meet that standard, it's a bad game. And that seems to be the opinions going around right now is that these games don't have enough content, they don't have enough this, enough that. And it's probably because we're so spoiled with content like that we have to buy, though. That's the thing. If we were if we were to work for that content, actually beat the game, we would be more vo motivated to like that game. Honestly, I think that's one of the major problems when it comes to us not liking the games coming out right now because it seems like no matter what the game is when it releases there's a bunch of haters for that game and i think a lot of people would like these games more if we deserved all the unlockables if we deserved what happens at the end if the game is complete if the game is full of content without us having to pay for it that's a huge problem right now in gaming it really is because with all of this paid for, you know, expansion packs and DLCs and stuff. It's really taking away what gaming used to be. We used to work for those unlocks. We used to work and and beat the games over and over and over and we had no problem with it. We loved it. We were drawn to those games because it kept us playing. When stuff is given to us for free just because we bought it, uh, well, it's not for free, but you know what I mean, without us working for it, there, it's simple psychology. We're not going to appreciate it. There's this study, it's called like the reward study, something like that, where kids were, they were rewarded for reading. And some of the kids loved to read, but when they were offered pizza and candy and all this stuff for reading certain books, they started to love reading a little bit less each time because they were only doing it for the prizes. And it's kind of like with gaming, we, we start to get in that same mindset where we're just playing because we want to buy the expansion or we want to buy this, buy that. When really that stuff should be free and we should be motivated to beat the game, be great at the game, work for these prizes and these rewards, but it's not like that anymore. So this may not be the main sole reason why gaming is where it is right now with all the criticism and all the, you know, everyone being spoiled and stuff like that. Not everybody's spoiled, but you know, I just mean in general. The negativity but this might be part of it. I think there's a combination of things that I can't put my finger on all of them, but this is probably a big piece. So I don't know. Let me know what you think, and thanks for watching this video, guys. Let me know what you think about that guy's response to Destiny's story. How do you feel about that? Do you agree with him? I have a feeling a lot of you won't. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. Peace.